It's Chloe and I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday so make sure you subscribe to see more. Today we are doing a new video and it's really exciting for me because we're going to be doing a plan with me for my Disney holiday and I am super excited that at the end of this year I'm going to be going back to Orlando with my family and we are going to be having such a good family holiday. Also don't forget that I still have one day left on my giveaway. I'm going to be announcing my winner on Valentine's Day tomorrow. How exciting. So quickly, head over to the video now. I'll leave a little card linked above. Not sure which side it'll be at, but click that button. Go enter the giveaway now. It's your last chance before I announce the winner tomorrow. To give you a little backstory, I have been to Orlando three times, four times. I have been to Orlando four times in my lifetime now, once when I was 10 with my family and then me and Lee went in 2015 where we actually got engaged. In 2016 we did an American road trip and we actually stopped in Orlando for a few days. Then last year in 2018 we went to Florida for a week and again went to Orlando for a good chunk of that because we just absolutely love it. There is just something about that place, it makes you fall in love and it feels like a home for us. Before we went, we could never understand how people would keep going back to a holiday destination year after year when there's a whole world to explore. After being there, we came home and we were like, oh gosh, we just can't wait to go back. So this year, why we're going on this trip is because it's Lee's 30th birthday this year. And it's also his dad's 50th this year too. So we thought that'd be really cool if we could all go on a big family holiday together. It was actually Lee who suggested it. He said, let's all go to Florida as just a fleeting comment. And from there, it kind of snowballed and we kept talking about it. It more. We suggested it to his parents and his sister and they were so up for it. We were really surprised that there would be and yeah, they were like, yeah, let's do it. Let's all go. So that's where we are. We're getting ready to book our holiday now. So I thought I would share a few things with you in the pre-planning stages. So the first thing we've done already is we've established what time of year we want to go. So we've decided that we want to go in October. Now we decided on October, even though it's not near anyone's birthday, so it's actually already been my father-in-law's 50th and it's Lee's 30th in July. <laughs> I don't know why I had to think about that then. So we had to decide whether we wanted to go for one of their birthdays or just at a completely random time of year. And we decided to do October rather than a birthday time because we've actually been in October before and it was amazing weather. We knew we definitely weren't gonna do it in January, which is when it was my father-in-law's birthday because that was just too soon. We wanted to make it more of a summer style holiday, which would have been perfect for Lee's birthday being in July. However, I went in July when I was younger and I was only 10 at the time, but I do remember there being massive downpours. And when we did our own, researching when we wanted to go we looked at when was the best time to go for like a summer style holiday and over this what we cost as a summer period kind of may to september it's hurricane season so although you're going to get the nice warm weather you're going to get it so humid there's going to be rainstorms probably most days and we just wanted to avoid that. That's how we settled on October the first time. So then when it was coming down to this time, we were like, well, we knew it was so good in October. Let's just do it again. Also, it misses out on any of the kind of major holidays. So you're not hitting the major summer holidays, no major school holidays, no big occasions in the US. So it's keeping the costs down. You're not gonna be paying the premium prices for those events. So then the second thing we've done is we've roughly priced up what it's going to cost us. now. In terms of this, I mean the bulk things. So flights, accommodation, and park tickets. So this was really important when we wanted to establish a budget for everyone and what everyone would need to save up. So it was really good because we've been before. We kind of had an idea on what it would cost us. This year, to be honest, the prices are a lot more expensive than what we thought they were going to be all around. So obviously it's just what happens. Flight prices increase, park tickets increase. So it's just something you have to account for. So we kind of got a rough like ballpark figure for everyone and said, this is roughly what it's going to cost for those major things. So that everyone could save up that amount and just so everyone had an idea what they were going to be spending. So that was probably about a year ago, we kind of had a rough idea of what it would cost. And then when it got to the 11 month mark, that's when flights start to come out so you can really get a closer look. Flights are obviously a big expense when you fly into the US. They take up a big chunk of your budget. So what I do and what I recommend everyone does is to use Skyscanner. Skyscanner is amazing. What it does is it scans 
all the websites to find all the different flight deals that are on, how much it is, what day, and it also has a really good feature where you can see the whole month. So if you don't have specific dates like we didn't, it allows you to see like the whole of October, and then through that you can find when the cheapest days to fly are. By doing this, you don't have to, it takes all the legwork out of it basically. You don't have to track all the different websites, finding what the best price is, what the best day through all of those are. It takes all the legwork out for you. You just have to go on Skyscanner and it's all there. Another good feature that they have is that you can set up a price alert. So I have this on now for a few different days throughout the month. I've kind of kept having a look at what some cheaper days are or what seems to be the cheaper days and then I've set price alerts up for that so that way they'll send me an email every time the price goes up or down significantly. So that's going to enable us to book the flights when it is the cheapest. Now there's no saying that you're going to get when it's the cheapest. They might be £30 more expensive, they might be £20 cheaper. You just don't know it's the gamble you have to take when you're booking a flight but having that alert on definitely takes some of that out for you so you can see when it goes down a lot and you can just jump on and book it so there's two main flight companies that we tend to go with or that we have flown to the US before and that's Thomas Cook or Virgin Atlantic both of them are brilliant they do the same thing they're both from Manchester which is where we're going to fly from so they're both from the UK to Orlando itself both the same amount of time it's just a little bit different so Thomas Cook is always cheaper, but Virgin you get better quality service and extras. So with your Virgin you get all like your drinks included, you get extra entertainment and slightly better in a nice cabin and seats and things like that. Whereas Thomas Cook is cheaper. If you don't get those things like you have to pay for extra drinks and it's not as luxurious inside but it is quite substantially cheaper so it depends what you're wanting to do. The next big price thing like I said was park tickets and these just keep going up year after year but what we found it best to do is to book your tickets before you go through a broker. So there's a few different ones that we've used in the past. There's floridatix.com and also attraction tickets direct. I'm pretty sure it's attraction tickets direct. I'll leave links to the different ones down below that we've used or that we're looking to use so that you can go and use them yourself. And by using one of the brokers you're actually going to get the cheapest price as well. They usually offer a cheapest price promise. So if you can find genuine tickets anywhere else for cheaper online then they will match that as well which is obviously really good. You don't have to think can I get it cheaper elsewhere or anything like that and also it takes a lot of the hassle out of it. You don't have to because they send them out to your house before you go you don't have to queue up when you get there to if you've had them on reserve or even to buy them because we've all seen those queues if you've been there just so long you definitely don't want to do that buying them before you go and having them delivered straight to your house is really simple that's what all these tips are about to be honest it's just keeping your trip as easy and stress-free as possible and what we're going to do this time which we've done the previous times as well is we're going to get the ultimate Orlando ticket so that's where you get like your all your Disney parks all six of them and all your three universal parks as well and they actually do all of the websites do a 14 days for the price of seven I think it is or something very similar to that so you're getting the best deal for your money you're getting the full range of things for the minimum price and that's so much cheaper than trying to buy them direct through Disney and then Universal and trying to combine them. I've done all the research for you, just go through one of the brokers and use one of the pre-packaged deals because they are so good. They're also really good because sometimes you can include like Kennedy Space Centre or Bush Gardens, they'll have special offers on where you can select to add those to your package for a fraction of the cost of what a full price ticket would do as well. And then the third, obviously, big one is your accommodation. Now, there's a few different ways that you could go. We looked at all of them, to be honest. So you could do a hotel, you could stay in Disney, or you could do a villa. Those are the kind of three main ones. And for this holiday, we've decided to go for a villa. Because there's gonna be eight of us going, we need some extra space, and it's gonna be nice to be able to all be together. So we thought, if we go to a hotel, then we're probably gonna be able to have like rooms next to each other or interconnecting rooms, but we're not gonna have that big space so we can all meet up. So by doing it in a villa, we have our own space, we have bedrooms which are our own private areas, but then we've got like our own pool and our own living area. So we've got a nice hub for a meeting point and say one day everyone doesn't fancy going out, a couple of people can stay in and around by the pool and you've just got, it's just a bit more like home from home, it's a bit more comfort when there's a lot of you and to be honest it's actually cheaper 
So because there's such a big group of us, we're just going to be splitting the price per person to work it out the best. So when we're doing that for hotel rooms, we'd need four hotel rooms and it's actually more expensive to do a budget style or just a standard hotel than it would be to get a nice four bedroom villa. So we decided that's the way to go for us this time and I've been searching a few different villas obviously we're not booking any villas until we've booked the flights and I forgot to mention we are probably going to be booking flights this week or next week I've kind of had my price alerts on and they're looking good at the moment so yeah I'm just waiting to get that alert this week to tell me that they've dropped by like 50 pound or that I'm getting premiere for economy seating prices so that's what I'm waiting on this week and then we're going to book her. But with the villas, I've been looking at top villas and also through Airbnb. There's so many different companies out there and you never know what's real to be honest. So there's like Orlando villas, like you can actually find them through like booking.com and things now. But I trust these two websites enormously. They've got a massive following and they're just very reputable companies. So what's really good about top villas is it's a kind of premium villa site. So although they do have like regular and standard priced accommodation, they really tailor to the more luxury market. So I like the idea of going and booking through them because they're really going to go that extra mile for you. They can offer like groceries to be in your villa when you get there. They can offer you a maid service, a butler service, like they can organise your park tickets, cars, everything. They go the extra mile so and I just... I like to do things like that so I think it'd be good to go with them also if they're dealing in really luxury properties they're gonna know like what people expect so their standard is going to be very high so you know that the villa that you're getting is gonna be really nice as well and then obviously everyone knows Airbnb it's a similar kind of thing and to be honest I found some really good deals on there but I think I'm just gonna go through top villas for all the previous things that I've mentioned so that's kind of where we are at the minute just this week, Lee has set up a spreadsheet as well for us all. So he's used Google Sheets and that means that we've been allowed to share it through all of us. And he set up one that shows you what you want to do and how long it's going to take. So we can each go in and edit something that we want to do and say how long it's going to take. So for example, Lee put down Magic Kingdom and one day. And I put down like shopping and half a day to a day. And this is going to let us all see what we all want to do and how long it's going to take and it's going to help us to plan an itinerary because that is one thing I suggest everyone does before they go. It was one thing that I heard before we went the first year and we had an itinerary down to the day and it worked so well and yeah, everybody should be doing an itinerary. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're actually planning to have a first planning meeting next week so that everyone can get excited and talk about what they want to do, what the expectations are for the holiday. And this is when the spreadsheet's gonna come into its own so we can go down and see what everyone's wanting to do, how long that's gonna take. And like I say, get some kind of basic itinerary going, see how many days we've got to play with because that's then when everyone can look and see if there's anything out of the order that everyone wants to do so obviously we all want to do all the Disney parks and Universal we realize when you're out there there's so much more to do than just that whether that's doing like the Everglades or going kayaking or a day out to the beach everyone has a chance to put it on the spreadsheet what they want to do and then we can organize it in to the itinerary at our meeting and I think it's just a really nice way to get your family all excited about the trip as well because it's not often that you do a big family holiday like this. So having a meeting to get excited about it is just another extra like nice thing to do because for a lot of people it is a once in a lifetime holiday. For my in-laws I know it definitely is so we need to make it as special as possible. And that's kind of where we're at at the minute. I plan on doing a whole like series of these different ones and then obviously culminating in the Disney vlogs at the end when we do go in October. So I hope you found some of these tips useful and that you can maybe incorporate them into planning your Disney holidays. It's such an exciting time and an exciting thing and I'd love to know if anyone else is going to Disney. Let me know in the comments down below if you are going so we can share in our excitement together and if you have any other tips for anyone on the pre-planning stages. I hope you've enjoyed watching it and I will see you on the next one. Bye!